Good morning. I'm Gordy Lai, speaking to you live here from South Harp Creek Church. Thanks for joining me. It is Wednesday, March 8th, and uh, thanks for joining along. It's uh, a little different today. I'm still looking at some snow out there. We had a interesting, beautiful snowfall the other night, and yesterday was beautiful snow on the trees, and here it is in March, but that's okay. Spring is on its way. Daylight savings time this weekend. So this past Sunday, it was, we had a wonderful time worshiping here, but after church, we went out to lunch as a group of us went from church, and we got to go see the movie Jesus Revolution. We Went and had lunch, went out to the movie. Uh, there was, I think, 15 of, <laughs> of us went. But for me, it was a very thought-provoking movie. Um, it made me, uh, there was some, I guess, some did some soul-searching. Kind of reminded me of the good old days. Um, I was in California post the Jesus Revolution, but still part of, I guess, the residual effect of that. But... Um, it, it depicted uh, we how we as Christians can kind of miss the mark, and um, not as Christians being Christ followers. Sometimes we hear the word Christian and um, possibly misrepresented, uh, because a Christian actually means Christ follower it doesn't mean your church attender doesn't mean a lot of different things that people play into it, but that we follow Christ wherever we're at, and that's. Um, Kind of the, the movie was interesting how it showed um, those that maybe kind of fell away, got too religious, um, but how Jesus was glorified through through different lives that just kind of drug addicts and everything else that kind of came out of the woodwork and um, ministered for Jesus. It's good to see movies like this come in. I. I gravitate towards them to try to support them. I think we as Christians should, so they keep making more. They have a lot of good value, eternal value, um, and those that maybe are searching for Jesus or searching for relationship with God through Jesus Christ might go and attend. So there's, i got to believe there's seeds planted, um, their seeds are watered. We, uh, For me, it was uh, kind of... <laughs> A little bit of a revival in my soul just to go to is very it was kind of emotional actually so i highly recommend this movie and there's so many others that come out but it was it's refreshing quite refreshing actually to see a movie like this stay in the movie theater so long and it's doubled or tripled the what the effect that they thought it would have so um, i highly recommend this to you um, this morning i'm going to talk about consider jesus and the scripture I'm going to read from is Hebrews 3, 1 through 6. The Apostle Paul was writing here to Hebrews, or Jews, who had accepted and embraced Jesus Christ as the Messiah. That wasn't a real popular thing to do because you had they already had their own religion. Um, but they, they noted that Jesus, they noted the significance of Jesus' life, that he was the Messiah. They were leaving their faith behind and decided to follow the teachings of Jesus. And I'm going to read, like I said, Hebrews 3, 1 through 6. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses was also faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as who, he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant, for testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as the son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope 
firm to the end. In verse 1, Paul addressed their life as a heavenly calling. We have a heavenly calling. We are Christ followers. Christ has called us, and we have a heavenly calling. He also asked them to consider Jesus as the apostle and high priest of their newfound relationship with Jesus Christ. Those were the terms that they could relate to as Hebrews. Those were the religious terms, the priest, the apostle. Um, They related to that. So Paul had an audience with the Hebrews. He wrote to the Hebrews these instructions. He was teaching the Hebrews how to follow Jesus. He taught a great lesson about Moses and the similarities of Moses. They knew about Moses. That was part of their religion. And And the similarities with Jesus Christ. Paul was reaching out to them and relating to them where they are or where they were at in their lives. That's a timeless message. That's something Paul preached about a couple thousand years ago. That message has not changed. Jesus Christ, we are to consider him. We are to follow him. We are to be like him. Paul was teaching the Hebrews the importance of considering Jesus and his life and following his example. Hebrews uh, 12.1, again, this we, I read from Hebrews 3. Now we're um, going to chapter 12, 1 through 3. Again, Paul encourages the Hebrews to look at Jesus and his life and leave behind religion. To be a Christian, not due to the religion, but a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Something that they hadn't experienced, that relationship. They can now have that relationship. They don't, they don't count on the religion, their, their temple attendance, or doing all those acts of uh, the works. They could trust Jesus. They could follow his example and live like Jesus. So in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, it states, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. And in verse 3, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. He wants us to follow Jesus, but not to be discouraged even in living for Jesus and following him. At times we can get discouraged, but we're to run that race, to press towards the mark that Jesus has called us. Jesus has a calling in each and every one of our lives. There's things we can do that no one else can do. There's people we can minister to, be a witness to, be an inspiration to, or an influence that no one else can. That's something God uniquely created us for. God's given us abilities. God's given us talents. God's blessed us with so much. We have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We are so blessed. Um, I want to share something now. I'm For those that don't know, um, I will be, um, my last day here at South Harbor Creek will be um, March 31st. I will be leaving, uh, moving out of the area. I'm moving to uh, just north of Chattanooga, Tennessee to be with my daughter and son-in-law. They live down there and I'm going to be living near them um, and starting the next chapter of my life. I'm thankful that I've had the opportunity here almost two and a half years uh, to minister, be part of this body of Christ. Been a a lot of good experiences here, Uh, good people, friendships, uh, relationships that 
have developed. I'm going to miss a lot of people here and in the area and, and my family and friends in the area also. But um, it's been a blessing. I pray for God's best in this church. Uh, what God has for this church, I just pray his best. And I'm very thankful I've, I've been here. I'm going to miss a lot of people. I'll be praying for you. Hopefully we can uh, maintain some relationships. But just want to uh, thank all of you for the opportunity that, that you've given me to minister here. And it's been a blessing. So with that, we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, all the opportunities in life. Lord, help us to live the life that you've created us to live. And not just to survive, but to thrive in the things that you called us to do. And who you've, who you've called us to be. Thank you for your blessings. I pray your blessings on this church, on this community, um, as as the body here follows you, Jesus. You'll bless as as we follow and as they follow. And just thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. You are my f heavenly Father. You are my Lord, and you are my friend, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed week.